الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد My brothers, my sisters, respected elders Jazakum Allah khair and the best greeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of you I'd like you to know that this particular gathering and this particular effort to share part of your life here with us today it is a part of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be concerned about the Muslim Ummah and to feel their pain it is part of implementing the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this particular meeting is witnessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the honorable angels as a matter of fact we could beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the end of this event that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell us all go away I have forgotten your sins all your sins Allahumma ameen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared in the Quran man qatala nafsan bi ghayri nafsin aw fasadin fil ard fa ka'annama qatala al-nasa jami'a wa man ahyaha fa ka'annama ahya al-nasa jami'a take a look precisely at this particular ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling each and every one of us Muslims and non-Muslims whoever kill one person one soul unjustly or spreading corruption on earth as if they killed all mankind and whoever save one soul as if they saved all mankind we're going through a hard time we're going really through a difficult time but for us as Muslims Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam taught us how to deal with the good time and with the difficult time, with the trials, the tests, the hardship, the tragedy, and with the happiness and the prosperity. Take a look at Rasulullah Sallallahu is telling us, أَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٍ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءً شَكَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءً صَبَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your sweetheart, the engineer of happiness, the champion of success, told each and every one of us, and this is major tip, that he is wondering about the situation of the believer. All their situation is good, and that's only for the believer. If he overcome, and that means she, with goodness, they thank Allah, and that's good for them. And if they overcome with hardship, they stand persevere, patient, and that's good for them. In this particular time, in this particular situation, we definitely need every drop of patience to deal with what we are going through because we are one brick wall as Rasulullah described us we support each other and we are one body if a part in our body injured wounded we can't dance and just feel happy and we are bleeding we can not see part of our body bleeding and the rest of the body is dancing no we have to show utmost care and attention attention is a serious matter Bank of Montreal spend millions of dollars to send their staff just to learn that word attention over 10 years ago they used to advertise that in the subway Bank of Montreal we pay attention so for us we have to pay attention to the needs of our community because we stand as one people in the sight of the non-Muslim so if you don't see yourself as one people they see you as one people so we have to care for each other my brothers and sisters and let me make it clear we do proclaim the good name of Canada and we stand firm against any one individual groups that could hurt the security of Canada because that security it is our security and that security is our children's security and their generation's security so we don't just talk and give a cosmetic talk we are really up to what we say we really love Canada care for Canada care for the security of Canada because that security it is the security of human beings and innocent people it is the security of Muslims it is the security of our loved one and their generation CSIS RCMB they care for the security of Canada 
but they get paid for it big money. We Muslims of Canada, we care for the security of Canada free of charge, out of love for the country, out of love for humanity, out of love for our children and their generation. So there is no button F when it comes to the security of country. We really ask Allah and we do pray. We don't give cheap talks, not at all. We do pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps Canada safe and secure and keep us in Canada safe and secure. When you see a sister walking in the hijab in Canada, when you see a sister walking in the niqab in Canada, you must pray that Allah keeps Canada safe and secure because there is some countries, what so-called Muslim countries, a woman can't even wear a hijab. So why do we have to fiddle and jeopardize the security of a country that really respecting Islam and respecting our mothers and sisters and wives and grandmothers and respecting us and letting us alone. Under no circumstances and for no excuse someone should touch the security of the country because we will pay generations to come. My brothers, my sisters, from experience, because you are somehow frustrated, frustrated at what's happening, frustrated why the media is doing this, why the police is not doing anything about it, why the Muslim leaders not talking much about it or trying even to do much. For us, dear believers, we can't just look at one person and start pointing the finger. The frustration exists, but we have to remember that Islam stands, starts with a handful of people. So for us, as a one person, effort, it could change a nation. That's what they say. Rubba himma al umma. Such a enthusiasm and willpower awakened a nation. So don't underestimate your effort. Don't underestimate your effort, especially in this difficult time. My brothers, my sisters, for us, we know that all these 17 arrested they are before the court, and we are not judges, and we are not lawyers, but we are part of that Muslim body. And they are Canadians, we are Canadians. They are Muslim, we are Muslims. Anything to tarnish the name of Canada, that will affect Canada, and will affect the economy of Canada, not only the Muslim Canadian, it will affect them. But we have to remember strongly that they are all innocent, till proven guilty not till claimed guilty. There is a difference between claimed guilty and proven guilty. Somebody that is really totally innocent, a person, but they don't have enough evidence and they don't ha know how to prove that they are innocent, somehow they could end up claimed guilty. But that doesn't mean they are proven guilty because we know mistakes could happen. And I would remind you of Nabil al-Murabi' here in Canada when the media went all over the world to crucify him and his family and to really show that they are terrorists and plus what happened? Nabil al-Murabi' claimed innocent by the government of USA, not by his lawyer only, not by his family, by the government of the USA. They went in an in intensive an extensive effort to convince the Syrian government that he is innocent. So mistakes could happen. And we have to give allowance for people who unfortunately their Bible becomes the newspaper and the TV. The newspaper, they are after sensation. They are after spreading negative energy and fear. That way they can sell newspaper. A good story does not sell a newspaper. So my brothers, my sisters, let us remember that those 17 people, they are totally innocent till proven guilty. And if one of them is proven guilty or 17 proven guilty, we are shoulder to shoulder with the authority to say, give them the maximum punishment. Why? Because our security and our name and Islam in North America is not cheap to try to fiddle with it and try to jeopardize our brothers and sisters who are walking in the street and our generation. You want your daughter to grow up, feel proud that she's Canadian, easy to find a job, easy to walk in the street, not because of one person trying to do whatever allegedly 
they want to do, then we all suffer. No, they don't have our signature. They don't have our approval. Us as a Muslim, starting from September 11, if we have a button to press and to prevent September 11 from happening, we would have all Muslims press that button with our nose and with our toes and with our finger to prevent September 11 from happening. If we had a choice to prevent this particular issue in Canada, as they call it, homegrown, from happening, we would. And speaking of homegrown, grown by who? That's not a complete sentence when they put in the newspaper, homegrown terrorist. Grown by who? We mean facts. And I'll tell you why I'm talking like this. Three years ago, approximately, or more, I had been approached by a CSIS officer who asked me about that mosque in Mississauga that they arrested six people from that mosque. At that time, I never been there. I never visited that mosque. I told him, I don't know about it. I don't know where it is. Why do you ask me? He said, because there is some youth, young Muslims, they have some kind of extremist ideology. Furthermore, in a private dinner with the Prime Minister of Canada in August 2005, I was sitting next to the Prime Minister when he said and addressed his concern about the youth in the Muslim community with their fanatic and extreme ideology. Furthermore, in March 2006, I participated February and March in the RCMP Citizen Academy. They chose 20 imam and representative in the community for two months, intensive course. At one time, we were presented with a CSIS senior figure who said something very important. This is March of this year. I smell, and I'm quoting him, we smell the trends of London here in Canada. As soon as he said that, I jumped. I was right in the middle of my table. Everyone is at the side. I said to him, this is not enough to say that. You have to give us more information so we can go and tackle this issue and we can deal with this issue and we can dissolve this issue throughout the community peacefully, the educated, the educational way. So this way we can go and prevent anything from happening because if something happened, your salary will go up and our life will go down. Our life will become difficult as Muslims. Everybody laughed when I said that. But it's not a laughable matter. And I confronted the same senior citizen, senior I mean CSIS official, I confronted him last Saturday when we got invitation in the police headquarters to brief us about the arrest before they brief the media. And I told him, didn't I tell you that? So he did not give us any information. Now why am I saying this? To show you that what so-called 17 homegrown, it is not a surprise. It is in the, they, they, they've been in the pool the RCMP and CSIS radar for at least three years to my knowledge. So I'm one person. Could you imagine how many other people they asked about them? Recently we read in the newspaper that most of them, they've been interviewed by CSIS. Not only that, a brother phoned me by the name of Omar and told me all of these guys' picture, CSIS showed these pictures for many months. Now the question here, the million dollar question, if these guys knows and they must know that CSIS is after them, and CSIS already interviewed them, and they are on the radar of the security, and they've been watched, could they be that naive and stupid to order three ton of fertilizer from the RCMP? If, I mean, something is wrong here. But again, that's the job of the lawyers and the judges. But we have to understand that when someone is arrested, we can't point the finger at them and crucify them. We have to know truth and details because sometimes the truth is the first victim. Speaking of victim, I urge each and every one of you, my brothers and my sisters, to reach for the first victim. And those, they are the families of those who are arrested. I have been in their pain. I have been through their pain and agony and fear. The matter what happened to me and my family after September 11, I have been through that pain, and I could relate to their pain. They need your help, spiritual help, emotional help, psychological help. And I had a meeting with Bill Blair, the chief. Bill Blair, 
the police chief one-on-one -on -one meeting and I addressed and I brought that point to him that we should reach and we need your support as the police we need your support to reach for those victims the families of those who are arrested they are the first victims they would never ever agree to their loved one to participate in any criminal activity starting from stealing a bicycle so I said to him we need to team up together with the police to give them the maximum support and help. Immediately, he agreed, not only in privacy, in the public. Before the press and the media, I brought the same topic, the same issue, and he agreed and encouraged the Muslims that they should have no fear to contact their families to offer them these particular helps. So keep that in mind. Jazakumallah khair. Let us take quickly, with whatever time I have left, few minutes, let us take quickly at certain pre-programming. Because for us, we can't just deal with the issue when the fast barab ras means when the axe hit our head, then now we are dealing with the issue. We have to deal with it before the axe hit us. And that's pre-programming. What does that mean? When you take an orange and you squeeze the orange, what comes out, my brother? Hot chocolate? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> no, the brother said juice. So, orange juice comes out. You take the same orange to Alaska and you squeeze it. What comes out? Orange juice. You take the same orange, my sister, to the desert of Kuwait where I was born and you squeeze it. What comes out? Orange juice. You know why? Because what's inside comes outside. So if we have inside us programmed the teaching of Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, don't get angry. Get along with people. Deal with people, non-Muslim. Deal with them with respect. A man is not a man who fight and wrestle. A man is a man who control himself at a time of anger. When we have all this teaching from the Quran and the Sunnah and the previous ayah I just mentioned and all the ayat in the Quran that show us how to get along and to deal with the non-Muslim in peace and harmony, to deal with them with respect. If you can't love someone, don't hate them. If you can't love someone, respect them. So when we are squeezed, when we have this programmed in our heart, when we are squeezed, what comes out? At a time of difficulties, and we are squeezed, the Quran comes out. The teaching of Rasulullah comes out. Why? Because we think a negative event should lead to a negative feeling, not at all. A negative event should go to thought. Thought will change it to positive feeling. When a negative event happened and we send it to thought and thought gives us the teaching of Rasulullah and the pre-programming of the ayat in our heart, good results comes and good feelings comes. Now, the issue here, my brothers, my sisters, it is not a matter of me and you, not at all. If we ignore to take this matter as a full-time matter. The police taking it as a full-time. The media is taking it as a full-time. The Muslims has to take this issue as a full-time because our generation's name, lives on the line. It is not me and you I'm worried about. I'm worried about our children and their children. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, this is going to be the show of the millenniums. Each and every one of us, don't underestimate your effort. Don't underestimate your effort even writing a letter, making one phone call, making dua. Don't underestimate your effort at this crucial, difficult time. Never been something like this in the history of Canada. Not for lawyers, not for judges, not for even the Muslims. This is totally unique. Even the lawyers, they don't know how to deal with this. The judges, they don't know how to deal with this. It's all new. For us, we know how to deal with this through the Quran and the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and to remember to always be proud as a Muslim. Always be proud as a Muslim because Islam is higher than anything, cleaner than anything and delicious. We take from the fruit of Islam. If one person goof, they represent themselves. If ten people goof, they represent themselves. They don't represent Islam. Islam 
it is much higher and cleaner and more delicious than anything we could imagine. Always be proud to be a Muslim, my brothers, my sisters, even though you have this appointment. Take a look at the final thing that I want to say in regards to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and see how the Sahaba dealt with people trying to harm Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not trying just to say something bad, trying to kill Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Take a look at the example of the companions. When a man came to do what? To commit the most serious crime on earth. Allow me two, three minutes to wrap up this. Grabbed, interrupted by Umar ibn al-Khattab, grabbed him. What are you up to? He said, killing Muhammad. Killing Muhammad? He tied him, he took him to the mosque, and he threw him by one of the pillars in the mosque. They called Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say sallallahu ala Muhammad. The most delicious taste comes out of your mouth when you say sallallahu ala Muhammad. The engineer of happiness, the champion of success, Rasulullah. Walking, looked at that person who we could call in our time now terrorist. Coming to kill Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, you can't find a bigger terrorist than that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa looked at the man, ordered Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, to untie him. What? Untie the man who, come, who came to kill Rasulullah, to kill the best of Allah's creation, the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes. Next, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered the companions to get him milk. Milk? For a man coming Take a look. I mean, let us see these as examples how to deal with non-Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gained the hearts of the non-Muslim by him living the Quran. Quran walking on earth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered the Sahaba to get this man milk. Immediately Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, raised, got the milk from the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his honorable hand, the best hands Allah created, delivered the milk. Hand delivery by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Could you imagine? Not the Prime Minister of Canada or the Prime Minister of Earth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivering milk to the man who came intended with his intention and all his body parts to kill Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said to him, drink. The man started drinking. Say, la ilaha illallah. He said, no. He said, I'm inviting you to Islam. Say, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu. He said, no, I'm not saying it. He said, I'm inviting you to Islam. He said, no, I'm not saying it. What is it? Time now for the Sahaba to punch him and kick him? Not at all. This is not Islam. The Sahaba standing still. They respect Rasulullah Sallallahu They love Rasulullah Sallallahu They obey Rasulullah Sallallahu Rasulullah Sallallahu looked at the man and told him, go, go away. You're a free man. Free? Coming to kill Rasulullah Sallallahu But the Sahaba standing still. He go free coming to kill the best of Allah's creation, our sweetheart, and still go free, man? The man started walking a few steps forward, came back, a few steps backward, came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu annaka Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness, there's no God, no Lord, no deity but Allah. And you are the messenger of Allah. Rasulullah pleasantly surprised. How come? I invited you to Islam. I invited you to say the Shahada. How come? He said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, I didn't want people to think that I became Muslim because I feared the sword. I feared the punishment to be killed. No, Ya Rasulullah. I don't want people to think that I became Muslim because of that. But the Prophet of Allah, I would like you to know, when I came to the Medina, I really hated you, Ya Rasulullah. But Allah is my witness. There's nothing on the face of earth now that my heart loves more than you, Ya Rasulullah. This is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And how Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dealt with extreme situations, if you're talking about extreme. Finally, Jazakum Allah Khair, remember, 
a listener can be much better than speaker. We need your input. We need your participation. We need your questions, your idea, your suggestions, your support. This is crucial time for each and every one of us. And remember that the media is separate than the police. The police sometimes, they know certain facts that the media is lying, but they can't tell the media, unfortunately. Not only that, we have noticed that RCMP and almost all level of authorities, they were really sensitive about the name of Islam. And we must admit that. We have noticed and they promised to be sensitive about the name of Islam. So don't mix the media with the police or the authority. The media, yes, they are there. They are a tools, they are power, and unfortunately, it's used against us. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.